on the Black Sushi Show. Yeah, uh, what rolls are you making for us today? Uh, I'm starting with the regular traditional California roll. I got a sample one right here. Never, never have I ever had that problem. <laughs> this how it was when I was in Italy. Because everybody in Italy is like five, 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 six. So they build everything small. Right. Thing about sushi is, you know, you want to try the symmetry. Everything the same. I think that's the best part and also could be the hardest part. No, you got to make a hundred rolls the same exact way. I started that way. And I think I'm kind of lucky. The place I worked at was catering sushi back before people were really doing that. Mm -hmm. And you see a name next to a hundred rolls. <laughs> it was like hundred California rolls when you came to work. So you got your map. <laughs> So, you know, being able to do that volume kind of helps me out with other people. Get a lot of stuff done. Not fast, not as fast. You know, you know, like I said, try to keep stuff symmetrical. Sharp knives are very important, too. Oh, yeah, let me catch that. Shop. Got any questions so far? No, nah, I just like personally watching people just be in their zone, you know? It's definitely my zone. Sometimes that's the best way people can learn, just watching, you know? And that's all I want the audience to do, just like really watch the technique, you know? And see why you're one of the best uh, black sushi chefs in the world. For real. I've been doing this since I was about 19, 20. Experience, experience is the best teacher, you know. And when you love to do it, it showcases, especially as you get older. Yeah. One thing about me is <laughs> I try to go, you know, fast, but slow and smooth food is fast. Mm -hmm. It's like cooking, you know. Some of the best things... Take longer to cook than. Oh, and they always taste the same. Mm -hmm. You could taste the love in it. Some of that stuff, even better the next day. That part. Just patience. So I like, like chilies. <laughs> yeah, chili, lasagna, that's on that list. Anything. Mm hmm. I'm going a little faster this time, as you see. Finish your shot up. And then I could do a traditional. With the seed on the outside, it's called osamaki. Mm. Might do that. Right. Yeah, try one of those. Let's 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 go see the different sides to the corn. Remember the first time you had sushi? Oh man, the first time I had sushi. I want to say I was about 15 years old. I'm I'm from New York, and being from Harlem, you get the you get the luxury of having like places like Chinatown and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I went down there, and it was a sushi place. And I don't know, me and my friends was like, let's just try it. And I, I was always one of those 
people that love food, so I tried it, and it was just like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> and that made my mind open up to actually like knowing more about cooking and food, you know, just the different types of flavors of from different uh, cultures. You know, and sushi hands down is top two easy on my list of what I like to eat. So I eat sushi every day if I can. I can't afford it though. <laughs> Oh, you'd be surprised. It depends on the types. Depends on the types you want. You got any favorite sushi spots here? Mmm. There's actually one right next door, about two blocks down. Uh, I want to say it's called Yoshinoko. It's really, really delicious. Yeah, yeah. My future highway is my time. They change names, they open up, and you try it. Yeah, that's how restaurants are now, you know. I know you're real popular in this area. It's called One Sushi. I ain't been there in uh, some birthday or something like this. Mmm, One Sushi. Yeah, that's kind of new. I gotta look that up. Very nice. For the people who can't eat seafood, you know, vegans out there. Spice mayo? Oh, that was good. Let me put some scotch. Mm. As you I should. I like the store though. Hill sauce is different. Yeah, hill sauce is a little different. A little different. Like, I, I brought some scallions too. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Add the little to it, man. That's what the people want to see, right? I'm just saying, education is, uh, is very important when it comes to this, to this field, you know, and you'll be surprised how many different cuisines it is in this world, so uh, you could really master one cuisine and ride it to the top, you know, or you could be good at a lot of different cuisines, but just finding your passion in this industry is like, to me, is like the best feeling, the best feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna enjoy this. Trust me. I'm gonna eat all of this. Huh? I'm about to. Uh, yeah, this is about to be the the mutt baby portion. <laughs> Just like farting, you can't get pressure. <laughs> it's not that far from you. We got off on that exit too, so I was like, yup. And then we came up a uh, peach industrial. How long have you been living in Atlanta? Uh, I moved out here about a year, almost over a year ago. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a fun ride so far. You know, it, it's been taking a lot of getting used to, but now that I'm like really finding my pace and my comfort zone, it's like I like it out here. I like space it. Yeah, it's like you can really like think. You know, and you can move. You can really like. It. I like it out here. Atlanta is cool. Being from Harlem, I call it the. I call it the Harlem of the South. You know, just as far as like the vibe and the culture, and just everything about that. I like it. What about you? What made you pull up to Atlanta? What made you become like a, a sushi chef and made you want to really take it to the top? You don't believe me if I told you. Uh, so when I got out of high school, I was a apprentice electrician. I was in the IBW. Mm -hmm. And one day my engine just like blew up. Like, and it's one of those situations where, you know, you just applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. And one, one guy called me and I didn't even remember what I was interviewing for. I just showed up in a shirt and tie and all that. 
and he wanted me to clean a sushi kitchen. And like I said, this was like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And nobody was really putting sushi in boxes back then. Like nowadays you go to Kroger, you go mm-hmm. to Whole Foods and all that. But this was a thing they were trying to do. And they wanted to do it in like hospitals and schools and stuff. And it was working where they came from like Philadelphia and like around DC area. And they would try to do it on a mass scale down here. That's what I was like. So one day, you know, it's just like, I'm there, I'm on the cleaning, wash dishes and all that. It's like, hey, you want to come prep these cucumbers? I'm like, hey, you want to come prep these avocados? Go to Monterey, California roll. Make sure you know I'm there like a whole year and I can do all the basic stuff. So, so what was that first time where, what was that first experience, what was your first experience, like, as far as, like, falling in love with sushi, where it's like, you know what, I love this shit. Like, outside of the job, as you asked me the same the question earlier, I'm going to ask you, what was your first experience when it comes to, came to sushi? Um, so I had stopped for a little while. It was hard to get a gig, you know, just being this young black sushi chef. And I worked this place, and they was doing, like, box sushi. I didn't understand it at all. You know, I thought I did. <laughs> and so I went to this other place. It's called The Rocky, and it was straight from Hawaii. And they had some of the best chefs. And he would do, like, he came in early. He would just sit there and just teach you anything he was doing. And I think having that one-on-one experience, like, listening to what he's saying as I'm eating it and tasting it, you know, in the in, in the restaurants, we call it omakase. It's like experience with your chef. And that's when I started to love it. And that's when I started taking it seriously. And then I started realizing that I was good. Mm. And I was like, you know, I started being scared. And that's when I started calling myself the black sushi chef. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. You know, I'm sure there's other black sushi out there. I'm sure they're great. But at the time when I was doing it, you know, even people just rolling the sushi, they didn't understand what they were doing. And I realized that that's when I started falling in love with it. Started wanting to learn it, you know, reading books and watching videos and, you know, like they come to work early and talking to my chef and watching them break stuff down. And, you know, that was like 2015. And But ever since then, like I said, I've been a black sushi chef. That's what's up. I like it because I like to catch, especially now, because we're living in the times when now, especially as black men, we're starting to realize we could do more than just what society told us we can do. You know, and reaching out, especially like to other cultures, like being a, a black sushi chef, you know, and this industry is so rare. You know, it's so rare that you actually have somebody who dedicates themselves to the focus of it. Yes. You know, because a lot of people, they love to eat sushi, but they don't realize the dedication it takes to actually learn it, you know, and just, like, perfect it. I had a chef that said it would cost, like, like college would cost you, we would waste $60,000 on fish to educate you properly. I'm like, man, that's crazy. <laughs> no, it does. I, listen, me going to college for, for culinary, I can honestly say I've seen so many kids that i seen, like, was it supposed to be in culinary school? You know, because the same thing, it's like the lack of respect for the actual product, you know? Like me, I'm one of those people, I understand that there's an actual animal that passed away for us to eat this. Yeah, that's You know, so you have to, you have to treat it with uh, the utmost respect, you know? So to me, sushi is one of those, one of those cuisines where it's like, I see that they treat with the utmost respect. You know, it's like you have, even like in certain areas, you have to really go through the trenches just to be able to make a sushi roll at certain places. So, yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky from where I learned. And then, like, you know, as I got older and I started practicing more, it's kind of like an end. Like, oh man, this guy does sushi. Like, we got to see that. We're going to spice up this one. Mm -hmm. I like spicy. Not too spicy though. I'm one of those people like. It's just a little hard. <laughs> I'm just showing some different rolls I did. No, I respect it because this actually makes for great quality and actually a good interview. You know, it's very interactive. You know, and so what? What are your plans for the future when it comes to you being a sushi chef? What's your ultimate goal? I just want like a little. It's like a little spot or, you know, it's like this. Like I said, like the Omakase style. One of my teachers, I call him my sensei. One of the guys at the same restaurant. He's used to teach me, like, stuff. That's how he likes to do things. He hates mm-hmm. big sushi. 
like restaurants and stuff. We like to do one on one. Probably move to the West Coast, get closer to the fish. Mm. So, what's your favorite uh, fish for sushi? Salmon. I eat, mm. I eat salmon at this time. Salmon is like the most common fish in the world. So, especially in America, that's you find salmon pretty much on any restaurant. Salmon's real popular. Very, very popular. I uh, suggest people try it. Like, if they want to try the raw fish, you start there. Because even tuna, tuna is right, right out there. Mm. I suggest salmon. Because everybody's had salmon. No, maybe not raw salmon. Everybody's had you know, salmon. Everybody familiar with the flavor of how it should taste. So. I'll do a salmon raw. Nice. Yeah. I'll nice. Do a, uh, you can have big one. Nah, you, you know what I want to do? I want to actually... Uh, after everything is done, mm-hmm. I want to actually just take like my iPad oh, okay. and just do like a nice little, cool, cool. you know, record over it. I don't want I'm sorry about the good thing on your camera. Uh, nah, you was good. You listen. Everything is straight. Everything is great. I'm not a professional actor. <laughs> Ain't nobody acting. Like, I like the. I like being real. You know, this is real content, and I like it. That's what the people want to see. People want to see the real shit. You know, people want to see how it really is in the kitchen. You know, a lot of people don't, I don't think a lot of people, I think a lot of people really underestimate, like, how chefs actually move in the kitchen, you know, especially, like, with the speed and, the, like, the attention to detail and everything. So, just them seeing this is, you know, I think is really good for them. It's really good for the audience. Try to nah, you real. succeed. It's not about trying. It's succeeding, you know, because... Like I said, I'm one of those people, I don't just deal with just anybody, you know, as far as when it comes to food. I like dealing with professionals. I like dealing with people I see that really have a future in this industry, you know, and I see that you have a, you definitely have a bright future in this industry because, like I said, you you have a niche and you have a market that, that people are about to get in tune with real quick, you know, like, you could take this across the world. Look how, look how the details, you know, you mentioned some really amazing products. This is art. Just cheat a little bit. That's this is good. art right here. That's you know? extra stuff somewhere. So what's your favorite uh, role as far as like to eat? What's your favorite role to make? Uh, uh, Yellowtail roll. Yellowtail scouting roll. Mm. Or my favorite role to eat, yeah. Mm. I like salmon, I like salmon nigiri, I like salmon shimmy, I think a little ponzu sauce, but if I'm eating a roll, I like spicy tuna or yellowtail scallion roll. Okay, okay. Me, I like the yellowtail. Me, I, I, I love I love all sushi in general, but if I could get a nice arrow roll with some avocado, you know, that's, to me, I don't know what it is about arrow. Arrow is like one of my favorite uh, crab, like soft shell crabs and stuff like that. Those to me like dragon rolls. They like the ones with the crunchy and the top on it. Man, listen, I'm one of those people. I could eat. I, I could eat sushi every day. But all right, this is not. I mean, listen. <laughs> when it comes to like a food that I love as a chef, sushi is hands down. Like sushi, then I'll probably say Italian. Then I'll probably go like uh, Jamaican, you know. Those my, those probably my top three, you know. Then you got Mexican with the tacos and stuff, authentic tacos. It's so many fusions. You know, it's man, listen. I guess especially when you went over here, and we on this side of the cab. Mm-hmm. There's so many fusion restaurants. Yeah, I noticed that just driving by and uh, seeing some of them, I, I, I noticed like yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, Fusion restaurants, which is actually a new concept nowadays, you know, because as coaches are starting to mix and uh, and twine more, you start seeing like a fusion of everything, you know. Like now you have soul rolls, you know. Oh yeah. Things like that, like you, and that's a mix of uh, Asian and and Louisiana Creole, you know. Things like that is like it's cool. I like seeing. It. Because it just shows that the art is evolving, you know, and it's always it's here to stay. It's not going nowhere. If anything, it's going to get better. So what are you making right now? Yeah, it's a scallion roll for you to try. Okay. Take a second. Do a favor. Share it with you. Nice, nice, nice. 
So tell people where they could find you at. Like, what what are some uh, places they can find you at? Uh, if they wanted to contact you, as far as like uh, just letting you do what you're doing right now for them, you know, of course at at a, at a fee. Because this man is about to take over the world. Uh, you can just you go know. to blacksushichef.com. Blacksushichef.com. There you have it. You know, I'm also. On social media. My story's on there. Sample menus, pictures. Nice, nice. Listen, go to his Instagram. You'll see this man is no game. He plays no games. Trust me. He plays no games. Like I said, I feel like it's an honor just having him at Nitty's Kitchen. Like, he's literally, he's literally in Nitty's Kitchen right now. So, to me, it's a huge honor, you know. Especially, like, this being, like, one of the first of how I'm doing it. You know, one of the first of the type of, of the concept. I know I had you on the first season, you know. That was awesome. awesome. Well, it was back. cool, you know. I really, and I told him, like, when I come out to Atlanta, I'm definitely going to bring him back. So y'all can see what he does. And as I see in real life, this is what he does. You know, it's no games. Like, this is, there's no games out here. You know, I love it. I'm still working on my Nikiri, so any sushi experts out there, don't you? Mm. <laughs> so what was like, as far as, what was the best moments and what was your worst moments as far as just, Within your culinary industry, within your culinary life, I think. See, my best moment. I remember when I was like, I want to say 22, 23, I'm working at a country club in Duluth, TPC Sugarloaf, I think it's called. And you know, this is how I started. I just kind of fell into cooking, and from an odd angle, and but you know, these guys in their forties and fifties, and they've been there forever. You know, they let me run the line on certain days, you know, stuff like that. Let me, you know, expedite when I'm doing one of the, like, tournaments and stuff. And that's mm-hmm. when I started really, like, feeling myself and realizing, mm-hmm. like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, so I never, never looked back from there. I think my worst moment was something I got stuck. Wasn't learning, wasn't growing. Mm-hmm. Going to work wasn't fun no more. You know, some people, like, need to escape from work. Now, sometimes I go to work to escape, you know. I know I got to go in there and turn the grill on and do what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> Mm. I think my worst moment is get stuck when you're not learning, when you're not growing. I think it, I think it affects your food, honestly. It does, because your mood, I feel like a lot of the food reflects on the mood that you had, especially cooking it, you know? Like, so I, I completely understand that. Like, me, I cook the best when I'm happy or when I'm really pissed off. It's, it's, it's so weird. Like, if I'm pissed off, for example, if I know we in the shits, you know, and the line is not doing what it is. Yeah. Then it's like locked in, you know? When I'm on the line. Or when I'm just having, like, extreme fun. Right? Yeah, when you're on the line, you, you got to get out, you know? Like, it's never going to stop. It's, it's like one of the worst feelings, but it motivates you. Mm-hmm. You're like, bro, you still got, like, three more hours on the clock. So oh. you're going to quit or you're going to cry. Like, <laughs> but to me, that's when I realized, like, the ones who, who built for it. Yeah. And the ones who I just know there for a check. You know, and I think you know it's cool as long as you know which one it is. Mm-hmm. You know, because some people just meant to be the executive chef; they just want to see the stuff go out, do the ordering and stuff. Some people meant that's, and some people would never do that if you paid a million dollars. That's a fact. You gotta love it. I say in this industry, you gotta love it. If you don't love it, it's over. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna really make it where you want to make it. You know. I miss making it here in the back. Time. What y'all think? No problem. Much practicing. Listen, you listen. This right here, I know my brother tight because he don't. He he can't eat. <laughs> well, I'm gonna cut him. Up. I'm gonna cut up one of the steak pieces and then just torch a little bit for him. Get some eel sauce. It tastes good. It's like a little barbecue thing. This is like the food you get Dragon Ball Z, man. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Like Crazy. when you grow up, and you start seeing. I used to watch all the stuff like the Naruto. Mm-hmm. And you see the little Naruto and then. Yeah, I think uh, me being a fan of anime definitely uh, yeah. made me a fan of just the culture of the food because, like I said, me watching uh, Dragon Ball Z growing up, you know, just seeing them, like, eating the rice. And uh, and I always wanted to know, like, how that tasted. So once I actually started tasting it for myself in real life... I'll try anything once. 
Yeah, as far as food, at yeah. This, at this point, just being a sushi chef, like I have no, I have no excuse not to. <laughs> yeah, like when I went to Italy, you know, they uh, they made us, they cook horse out there. Oh, that's cool. You know, but that's like how America, we look at horses as like pets and stuff. Yeah. Like don't eat, you, they look at it as food. So like to me, it was just like he tried it. Of course, I had to. What's you the texture know? like? Honestly, it's almost like roast beef. Okay. It's almost like roast beef, but you gotta cook it. Oh, really like how you cook it? Right. Yeah, you gotta meat. braise it for like Speaking of five texture, or six you hours. You cut this in, whatever. This is how you want your sushi rice to be. You want to be able to identify every grain of rice, no mush. Mm. That matters. I want to bring that up. So how? What's the perfect like? What's the technique of as far as like getting the rice to the perfect? Washing the starch off very important. Some people like to count their washes. Mm-hmm. That's a lazy technique, in my opinion. You wash it until the water's clear. You know. Okay. You know, you might got a bad bag. You know what I'm saying? So you can't come in and say, "Oh, I wash the rice five times every time." Like it's you wash until it's clear. Mm. That's that matters. Is there a certain uh, vinegar that matters? Is there a certain yes. recipe? Some people like to make their own sushi vinegar from scratch, but you can always buy. It'll say season sushi vinegar in any place that you go to. Sorry, I got the plane from here. I have some good pictures. Let me see. I think I'm right. I send the photo stuff here. Oh. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Trust me. I can see you. Yes, there you are. I'll be trying to do my little ones and twos in the kitchen sometimes. That's what's up. I'll be trying. I'll be I just trying. didn't want to leave you all too long, so I know you was trying. I'll be like, I got the stuff. I'm just going to bring it anyway, even if it annoyed me, because I might have something you need. <laughs> nah, you good, man. I, I respect this. This is some really good quality video. Right What's your big ass? You know? Nah, listen. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm, you're, the, you're the artist. You know, I'm the, I'm, me as the chef, I'm the last person to tell people I'll tell you what, what you create when I know they're creative themselves. I just tell people, do what you do and watch. You know, you never so, know. Back to me, like, learning sushi, though, right? Yeah, like, people always say, like, I, like, learned, like, a like a samurai warrior. Because I said my car was was, uh, was damaged. The engine had problems, right? And I couldn't get to this place at the time that they wanted me to. Like, not on the bus. I would get up and walk an hour and a half every morning. I'd get up at 3 in the morning <laughs> and walk to go learn sushi trade. So, and they'd be like, man, you really wanted to learn. And I was like, I really wanted to work in a restaurant. I gave, they gave me a start just cleaning. Mm. I always tell people, you know, that's probably the way to go. That is the way to go. I started off as a, even though I have my it's culinary good. degree, Spicy pepper, I man. still started off as a dishwasher. Because for me, I always wanted to uh, own restaurants. Yeah. But to me, I always felt like in order for me to understand everybody in a restaurant, uh-huh. I have to do every job. Like a you know, pepper. so I felt like for me to start from the bottom and work my way up was the best route, even though I had my degrees, you know, but just the experience of it, you know, is what humbles you to, to the industry, you know, like you walk in an hour and a half just to be there, anybody will see that dedication. They'll be like, nah, he loves it, you know, and as you can see years later, look at it, you know, look at the product of you being able to have the dedication to walk the hour to work every day, even when, you know, it was no excuses. And that right there. I never thought it'd be sushi. Like, you know, the like soul food kitchen catering like everybody else was doing back in the day. <laughs> I started in a sushi catering company. Listen, you, you different, bro. Trust me, that's different. You gotta understand, especially now, like that's so different, especially as a black man. To me, it's just fine because it is different. You know, it's not the traditional route that you see pretty much 90% of us take, you know? I personally feel like soul food is an easy route for us because that's our comfort zone. We can do that in our sleep. But the things we actually have to learn, the things we actually have to dedicate ourselves to, in order, the techniques we have to dedicate ourselves to, though, that's the results you see right now on the table. You know, and that right there, that's your diamonds. That's your money. You know? All right. So what was that that you just made? A spicy Cali. 
Tyler Rose type stuff. You, know you see, you show your shoulders like this, no. <laughs> you know? Oh, I mean, once you learn the basics, you can do whatever. Once you like eat enough restaurants, you're a dragon roll here, a dragon roll here. The, the spider roll is always the same. Mm. It's always, the spider roll is usually soft shell crab roll. You know, these are all your heavy hitters. You know, very nice, very nice. As you can see, man, listen, this man just came through and made a whole piece, you know, that I'm about to demolish. I don't know about you, but I'm about to demolish this stuff. Thank you, man. I genuinely appreciate it because wow. this right here is, this is, you know, money can't buy shit like this. Money can't buy moments like these, you know. I genuinely feel like I have one of the future top sushi chefs in the world in my house right now, you know. Like I said, just continue going, continue doing what you got to do. If you got anything to say to the world, anything inspirational, anything you want, this is your moment right now. Check me out on BlackSushiChef.com, Black Sushi Chef on Instagram. I'm out here, you know. As I can see, this has been another episode of Chef to Chef. You know, I have Chef Connors Hope, a.k.a. The Black Sushi Chef, you know, I genuinely appreciate this, and thank y'all. <laughs>
The best thing that I learned, what people don't like to do though, catch your fool when he's fresh. Yeah. People don't like people be wanting to eat and all that fresh and all that. Catch that shit when he's fresh. Like, fool, wow, wow. Yeah. One thing people do love is food, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, every time I post food, girls be like, that's why I became a chef, so I can be for free. Which one is the vegan one? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get you a steak. Well, I'm gonna get you a steak, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you're coochie, bro. Oh, this is, this is bro. well presented right here. This is that? crazy. I've been doing this so long. It trips me out, too. I remember they told me I probably wasn't built for it. I didn't know I got the best surgery. <laughs> one, I mean, thing I, one thing I learned, you can't really listen to me weird oh, yeah. at all times. Lip, you listen, I mean. Some of those people taught me the best stuff too. They were haters. <laughs> no, no, you gotta listen to them, but don't hear them, but don't listen. Yeah. You, know, no, you can hear them out, but don't like, listen. One of my most deep favorite right right to fight and everything. Listen, if you listen to them, you would listen. This right here, this is the shit right here, bro. Even when I talk the slowest moves, moves are fast. Mm. That's why I like watching Bruce Lee. I wish I was sharing this shit. I never used to understand when Bruce Lee was like, be water. Yeah. I used to always try to figure it out. But, but I am water. So it's like, mm-hmm. as soon as I start to hit, like, no, I say, I can oh, demolish. that's what it mean, like. I can demolish all the sushi by myself. <laughs> where, where the wasabi at? That's your man. Mm-hmm. That's the spicy joint? Mm-hmm. I brought the spicy man to rock with it. Where that's at? See, he the, he the chef right here. I try to keep it authentic. I want, I want to do an episode when y'all teaching me. We got to get both of y'all so to good. teach me I how to cook to something. Good. We're going to do that episode. Mm-hmm. And she's like showing me, like, because, bro, I know nothing about the kitchen, right? All I know is kids um breakfast. Breakfast is people dice are scary. <coughs> so particular. When I start working like fast paced environments and I need this mm-hmm. much over easy, this many, I'm like Ninety percent of chefs I know don't like doing brunch. But me, I fucking love that shit. Like, nah, yeah, I love it. I used like, to like people hate doing brunch. Like, you want straight for the sausage, huh? There you go. You go now. Ah, buddy. That's hilarious. You you had too much, Donnie. That's why. Oh, but the crazy man, that's just gone. So I was trying to some talk. Hey, how did you do the sauce, chef? Bust your brain. Your sauce. I just bust your brain. Like, pow. This shit right here. Woo. Oh, my goodness. Using some official ass chopsticks right there. This is all official ass seafood. Sushi. Oh, the spicy one is dope. I like it. You got a little tight people, too. That's how you eat tight people. That's the picture you're about to get there, like this. This is just spicy. This is a good one. I got to get you right, since you don't eat fish. Huh? So I got to get you something since you don't eat fish. I got to get you right, Donnie. Hold on, hold on. Even made something. 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 Even made 
this is just a little, you know. Don't put me on camera well, doing this. No, I'm not. Make the steak from burning yeah. all that. Yeah, put. This camera's on. <laughs> you put on this thing? It's perfect. Got a better, a better background. Now, what he about to do is some shit that you probably never even seen before. All right, man, let's show him now. Yeah, it's real loud. It's a quick little scene. Yeah, man. Black shit. Black and silver shit. Stop playing. Black suits and shit. Hey, instant cooker. You don't even need a microwave. I'm having a microwave. <laughs> Not in your face. You'd be surprised how much shit you put in microwave in restaurants and never tell you. A little eel sauce on it. It's like a barbecue. Yo, I appreciate this one. Yeah, I'm a father. Nah, this is old. You got your dietary preferences. That's fine. This is old. Food. Oh, I got at you on the good day, my boy. The black sushi shop. That's you on the grid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright. Put that little thing up here. More. Okay, good. Get some little piece. This is a piece on one of them. Mm -hmm. I learned. Not too much. <laughs> I learned. Not too much. Yeah. Send some little chicks with the fire. Or something like that. I'm going to send some right I make it look like we in the restaurant. Watch this. Oh, I haven't practiced that. I have my food photography. Bro, if you could take a picture of us, man, that'll be dope. Please, please. I am. I got you. I got to get this sweat off my ass. Yeah, your lights are burning. <laughs> I start sweating halfway through. <laughs> 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 oh, your is nice. <laughs> Word up. I'm on stage. I'm trying to make it look more professional. Hey, you know? I'm trying. <laughs> Oh, yeah, avocado, that's the ghost. Yeah, it's yeah. the, the fat, you know, avocado, cooked with vinegar, right? Mm. I'm going to send you all these pics. I'm about to add you right now. I'm going to taste this bad boy. The black sushi chef, man. Trust me. Listen. Oh, wow, that's my first time ever eating with ghost. It's amazing, ain't it? That's the way you look in the chops. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying to to stuff it. I'm trying to stuff it back in the fig. I'm just thinking, what's the old boy? I feel like you're missing a viral, a viral opportunity right here. It's like right. man tries chopsticks. <laughs> it's this viral though. I ain't gonna hold it. I want the tea. I want the tea on it. Hashtag, can't take you niggas nowhere. <laughs> Yo, bro. Oh, mm. That's hilarious. Mm. Oh, man. Slapping. That's it, right? Slapping. Yo. Nah, this right here. This, man. You sell these, right? You don't yeah. be selling them? I, I was, um. Bro. I've been all over the place, like, messing with. Listen, listen, yeah, boss. Since I've been doing that cool do. shit, I've been trying to take advantage of that. Trying. You know what you want? Chinese plates? Yeah. You want to get these? You want to put a bunch of those in there? I used to write Chinese plates. I'm going to sit in the corner. I started as a sushi chef. I was our old manager. Like, I'm about to finish this sushi. Brother, I'm telling you. You can sell these on the corner. This shit is good. You. The steak joints? Tune in. Oh, yeah, I mean. The black sushi chef. I promise you. The black sushi chef. You will not. Welcome to the